He shall be diverse, different from the first, and he shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. You see how many times we are reading this? How many times Daniel is reminding us? Well, on one side he's telling us something. He's telling us something. Number one, he's telling us, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if you find a human being, a little fellow, if you find a creature here on earth speaking against the Almighty God, against the Son of God, against the Word of God, against the dealings of God with man, against the plan and the program of God. Don't be surprised because there is one coming. And that one coming, he will say it for the whole earth to hear the little, little ones and the miserable ones that are following after Satan today. They say it in a corner. They do it in a corner. But when this Antichrist comes, he will do it everywhere. And if that bothers you, then get ready for the rapture. So that when this Antichrist will say it blasphemously against the Almighty God over the television, over internet, over the whole world, you will not be here. I said you will not be here. How do you feel if somebody stands in front of you and insults your mother and calls your mother a bad name, terrible name, shameful name, disgraceful name, and paints your mother like somebody not to talk about? How do you feel? You feel very bad. Am I right? How do you feel if somebody comes to you and then he says some terrible, unprintable words against your father, as a father? Miss terrible things, blasphemous things, shameful things, dirty things that you shouldn't even hear and says that about your father. How do you feel? Do you feel good? You feel very bad. How will you feel if the God of heaven, your creator, your redeemer, the God of gods and the king of kings and the Lord of lords, when somebody comes and he speaks blasphemous things against him, you will feel like you are torn apart. And that is what the Antichrist is going to do. He's not going to respect the feeling of anybody. The children of Israel, they respect God, they honor God so much, they cannot even pronounce his name. If you go to Israel, they refuse to pronounce the name Jehovah, the Almighty God, the Most High. But when the Antichrist comes, this great name they exalt, and this great name they respect, they honor. This blasphemous king of fierce countenance will blaspheme that name without blinking an eye. And that's why the time of the Antichrist will be a terrible time. And that's sometimes today when, you know, young people, when they come in the public and they say blasphemous things against the Lord Almighty, I do suppose you know God and respect God, those of us who are really saved and born again, we will feel it like a dagger in our hearts. Am I right? And that's why if you have a little antichrist at home and, and you see the way they talk about our God and the way they talk about church and the way they talk about the Bible and the kind of dis disrespect and dishonor they have and you know that, hey, there's a little antichrist and this is a little person that is speaking blasphemy against God. It's a dagger in your heart. You want to do everything you can do to say, hey, you are following after the footstep of the antichrist. Come back and stop that and repent so you can be saved. There's still salvation today, forgiveness today. If a person continues like that in the path of the Antichrist, he will perish forever. I pray you will not perish. We're looking at that uh, chapter, at that chapter 7, and I'm reading 9, verse 25, and he shall speak great, great words against the Most High. I shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change times and laws, and shall be and it shall be given him, and shall be given to his son until a time or year, and times two years, that's three, and the dividing of time, that's three and a half years. In verse twenty six, and judgment shall sit, the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven 
heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and shall obey him. I pray that you will be part of that kingdom in Jesus' name. In chapter 8 of Daniel, Daniel chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 23. In the latter time of their kingdom, the when transgressors are come to the fool, a king of fierce countenance, that's the man again, that's that king again, that's the antichrist again in prophecy before he comes. A king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. It will be Satan energizing him. It will be Satan invading every part of his heart and life. And it says, but it's not in some power. He shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his, through his policy also, he shall cause crowds and to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy how many? Many. By peace. And you know, there are some people that facially they look gentle and they be walking sluggishly and slowly, and it looks so nice. And when they speak out the words, they don't shout like we shout. And they're not boisterous, they're not fun. They're just very nice and cool and very gentle. But inside their heart, the wickedness is there. That spirit is there. That self-will is there. They may not even argue publicly. They may not even, you know, oppose anybody openly. They don't, they're not confrontational. That's how the Antichrist will start. He'll be a kind of person that welcomes people and draws people and embraces people so that with that kind of pretense, they'll be able to deceive people. And as you know, sometimes uh, you watch your children at home and they look so gentle and so submissive. And if we say, is your child born again? Oh, my child, she's born again. He's born again. And then when you hear that they do something terrible, you say, no, cannot be my child. And when you investigate, you'll find that thing was done. is true. You say, my child, what happened? Have you been deceiving me all these years? Because at home you read the Bible, you sing the songs, are so gentle. That's what you're talking about. It's not just the facial appearance of gentleness. It's the real salvation, the righteousness in the heart. And I pray that that real experience that will make us live a righteous life within and without, the Lord will give to everybody in Jesus' name. And it's not only the children, not only the youth and the teenagers, even the adults too. There are some times that if you look at how gentle some people are, officially, superficially, you'll say this one is a real sanctified child of God. And it's not even saved because of this characteristic of the Antichrist that by peace, by gentleness, by softness, it will deceive very many. I pray you'll not be deceived in Jesus' name. How I pity and, you know, we almost say weep and cry and pray for those who have gotten married to some men that, you know, when they approached, they look so gentle. It appears that, you know, they say, I've been looking for somebody loving and peaceful and gentle and patient and long-suffering. And I've got, I don't even need to pray. This one, this one, this one is good. This one is great. And then after the marriage, after one week, two weeks, and that man beats life out of her, wanting to kill her. You say, what? Before we marriage, you were so gentle. What changed you? No, nothing changed him. He has always been abandoned like that. You only pretended so as to get you into the bondage of marriage. That's why you pray and find out what's the will of God so that nobody by superficial gentleness will deceive you. You will not be deceived in Jesus' name. Here yeah, we're told in the word of God that if we're not careful, such deception will be there. Look at that in verse 25 again, in chapter 8, verse 25. And through his policy also, it shall cause crash, deception to prosper in his hand. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. But it shall be, tell me, 
broken without hands. Chapter 11, verse 31. Daniel chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 31. In verse 31, an arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. They bring abomination, it will not come to our church. Verse 36, and the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women. And then it goes on to say, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. And now he tells us in verse 38, But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Well, when all these things shall be happening, where will you be? When the Antichrist will be on earth, where will you be? When the Antichrist will be troubling everybody on earth, oppressing everybody on earth, where will you be? I will be with Jesus. I will not be here at that time. If you are ready for the rapture, you will not be here. What would you so as not to be here? One, we get saved, genuinely saved. A kind of salvation that is real. A kind of salvation that gives us a righteous life, a holy life. You get sanctified. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. He that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Let's look at Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 34. Luke chapter 21, verse 34, and take heed to yourselves, lest eh, at any time your hearts be overcharged with sulfiting and drunkenness. It says, take heed, watch your life, watch your behavior, watch your action. If you do not have the real salvation, biblical salvation, a kind of salvation that makes the person righteous and pure and holy, go back to the altar and kneel before the Lord Jesus Christ and confess your sin and forsake your sin and have real conversion, real salvation. And then it says, you take it yourself, that the, care, that the cares of life will not swallow you up so that they come upon you unawares. In verse 35, passes near, shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape. We will escape. I said we will escape. I've shown you all that the Antichrist will do when he comes, that a king of fears, countenance that will blaspheme God and stamp upon the people and war and fight against the people and want to destroy the saints of God, that is the children of Israel. And all the people who are here at that time, his dominion will be all over the earth to devour, to destroy, to devastate. But then it says now in verse 36, watch ye therefore and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man will be with the Lord. I said will be with the Lord. Why don't you then rise up and pray to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't want to be in this place when that future beast, when that king of fierce countenance, when that antichrist will come to rule in this world. I don't want to be here at that time. Whatever is happening here on earth now, I want to have the experience of real salvation, experience of real sanctification, experience of holiness, experience of walking with the Lord. I don't want to have the self-will. I don't want to have the spirit of the antichrist. Christ. I don't want to be a person that is hearing and hearing the word of God and yet will never change, will never repent, will never turn, and will never have salvation. I don't want to be here when that antichrist will come. Don't you believe the word? Don't you know 
all the days of the unchanging, infallible, eternal word of God, and that is going to happen at the end of time. And this is the end right here now. You want to call on the name of the Lord, and the Lord himself will have mercy upon you, that you will not have the spirit of the Antichrist, the life of the Antichrist, the behavior of the Antichrist, the blasphemy of the Antichrist, the opposition of the Antichrist, that you are going to live a life today that will show that you are a real child of God. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. We have heard the word of God, we meditate on the word we have heard. We don't just hear the word of God and throw it away. We don't just hear the word of God and store it in the head. Apply it to your life. And determine that the grace of God will be mighty in your heart. That's what the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, that will fill your heart with peace, with love, with joy, that the character of Christ will be reproduced in you, so that when Christ will come, You'll be ready to go with the Lord. Pray that you'll not just be a religious Pharisee, a religious Sadducee, a religious church goer just coming to church. Nominal, superficial. The word of God having no effect, no transforming power. Pray that the Lord will make you respect and honor God. That all the shallowness and pretense, the Lord will take it away. That your life will be so convincing to bring other people to the Lord, even before you preach to them. That the light of the gospel, the life of a real new creature in Christ, will be so visible, manifest constantly in your life, in your heart. No pretense, no hypocrisy. And you will live the life that will draw other people to the kingdom of God. You meditate on the word, meditate on the word, meditate on the word. Are you in the kingdom of Christ? Are you submissive to Christ? Are you yielded to Christ? Fathers and mothers, are your children born again? Or do you have little, little antichrists at home? Little, little antichrists in the church? Youth leaders, what kind of youths are we racing up? Are we leading them to salvation? Are we influencing them to honor God, to respect God, to bend the wheel of the mighty God? Are we just having youth ministry? And we see the traits, the character, the characteristics 
of the Antichrist in them. Parents should be concerned. Leaders should be concerned that everyone identifying with this church shall have real, real salvation. Not religion. We have studied it tonight. The Antichrist will come. And he'll do terrible things, indescribable, unthinkable. And we've seen the central characteristic of that Antichrist. Will do according to his own will. If you are like that, you are not a disciple of Christ, you are a disciple of the Antichrist. Salvation will take that away from you. Conversion will take that away from you. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. If you are born again, you will love the Word of God. You will accept the Word of God. When you've done something wrong, something you didn't uh, intend, but you find it to be wrong, you delight in correction. You delight in the teaching of the Word of God that will bring you to the path of righteousness. There's something you are that hates teaching, doctrine, righteousness, holiness. That's not of God. The spirit of the Antichrist that motivates a person to hate the things of God and to fight against the things of God. Pray that the Lord will subdue your will to his own will. Then will you be able to pray with sincerity, Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Such people do not act like the Antichrist. Pray that God will get you ready for the coming of the Lord. So you'll be a saint, a child of God, righteous, pure, and holy. And when the Lord shall come, you'll be among the saints, among the elect, that will go with the Lord. Meditate on the word day and night. Observe to do according to this word day and night. Live by this word of righteousness day and night. Pray that God will help you. You will not be a nominal church goer, superficial church goer, religious 